Tom here from Lawrence Systems. We're going to talk about XCPNG 8.1 and Zen Orchestra 5.45. These two updates both came out today. Same developers put both of this together, and there's some major cool updates coming uh, in this version, especially this RAM stuff. I want to have a demo of that. That's kind of fun. If you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you want to hire a short project, there's a hire us button up at the top. If you'd like to support this channel in other ways, there's some affiliate links down below that gives you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. Major highlights, RAM enabled backup support. We were playing with this and my staff was like, wow, that's really cool. And it is a pretty neat, we're gonna, when you do the demo of that, but what you're able to do with this is grab a snapshot of the VM in a running state not just the hard drive, of course, but the memory too, restore it even to another machine and have it not boot up, but start in that same state. So it's kind of like frozen in time, backed up and re-established in that same running state, even if it's on restored on another machine or just you know rolling back from a snapshot. So you don't even have to reboot, you can actually just revert back to that running state. Kind of interesting that they've uh, made all that work and it's cool to see in uh, when you see it running. This is something that's going to make a lot of people happy. New hardware support for the AMD Epic processors is uh, coming, well, built in. They've been adding it, but there's still more because I know there's a few other, like the Ryzen support. There's some quirks with it that people have commented. They need your help. The developers need help in order to find those quirks. You have to let them what they are. They have forums for XCPNG. So head over to their forums and uh, join the discussion if you're one of the people that have one because, well, as developers, they may not have every processor combination to try now, but they have worked on the Epic ones, but they're also working on some of the Rise and stuff. And I'll, I'll be talking about that a little bit further down here as well. EXT4 is now the default. If you didn't know when you're setting up a local file system, uh, it was defaulting to EXT3, but you could, up, you could change it to EXT4. Now it's EXT4 by default, which is great. Uh, alternate kernel. There's a bunch of parameters for some alternate kernel options, and this is also to help you when you have systems that just don't want to boot with the default kernel. And you can look through, and they'll, it also allows you to at least get it loaded and figure out what some of the challenges are. And then once again, report to them in their forums, and they'll help fix the main kernel. Now, XFS, experimental XFS local storage report is still available through the SM additional drivers. ZFS is available as an additional package. So I think I've talked about that in the past where you can load these if the hard drives are passed through and build a ZFS array. Um, you build it out from the command line and then you can map it within Zen Orchestra and use it for storage. Installer improvements for XCP 8.1. Our installer now offers a few options, BIOS mode, access them with F2 and order to choice, UFI mode, uh, let's see the booted entries. First new boot option, the boot installer with 2GB RAM limit instead of 8GB default. This is a workaround for installations for hardware or Ryzen CPUs. Those are desktop class CPUs not officially supported in a hardware compatibility list, but they tried to make it easier for workaround for the installer crashes on Ryzen issue. Second new option, the boot installer with alternate kernel, kernel alt, the kernel built maintained R1 for the team based on the main kernel with upstream kernel patches from the LTS branch applied. This is very, very stable. Uh, construction, but it receives less testing. So once again, this is just a few things on there. Now, as far as upgrading your system in place, XCP 8.1 is a minor upgrade from 8.0, so you can do a yum upgrade in place. We actually, on our lab system here, we're running it in beta. Uh, when I loaded the beta, then we did the upgrade to the full and it went perfectly fine. I haven't updated all of our production systems and all of our client production systems yet. That's usually something we reserve for weekends, uh, weekend projects depending on how they set up. Uh, if you want to know what the installer looks like when you put the alternate option, this is what that is. And yes, I am running the installer, uh, installing Zen inside of Zen. If you ever, you can play with this, just so you know, it's not ideal. I wouldn't recommend this at all for production, but if you turn on nested virtualization, uh, you probably could get, I didn't try going through the full installer. I just ran the, uh, pulled the boot installer up here, but it does have nested virtualization in XCPNG. I don't know if it'll let you double nest this or not, but not to get off topic. These are those options that come up for the alternate kernel and things like that. It's just like they said, press F1 for standard or F2 for the advanced options to be able to see these. There's your standard installer. F2 brings up this one in here. So these are some of the options you can do when you do the install. Now, let's run down the list over here that's in Zen Orchestra. And it's, like I said, the same developer, so you kind of get a combination of things. So this is available, the RAM enabled backups. You do need the latest version of Zen Orchestra to take advantage of it. So it's a combination of XCPNG and Zen Orchestra both being on the latest. And I did the compiled one. I recompiled it today just for doing this demo. But of course, if you're on the paid full version, this is all just 
part of the update channel you can get. Uh, the Zen Orchestra Proxy, they have the destination storage, destination network. They've updated this more, so this is really cool uh, for doing the proxy deployments. I'm going to do a video on that at some point, but not yet. Uh, audit log, integrity checking. I've talked about the audit log when last time there was a new version of Zen Orchestra, so they've enhanced that even more. Backup list for each VM. This is neat. So here's the server. New tab added. So you can see when was the server last backed up for that particular VM. And each backup related to this particular uh, VM will be listed right here. So you maybe you have more than one backup schedule, one weekly, one monthly, etc. They'll all be listed right here. But I think that's pretty sl uh, slick the way they have that. Go down over here. Migration enhanced. Migrate VDIs from the storage view. So if we wanted to move, we'll go back here to the disk. Uh, we have this and we can migrate all of them to one of the other VDIs just like that. So it's kind of nice that they have this option uh, done here. I thought I've seen it there for a while, but I maybe it's because I'm always running latest beta versions on there. Uh, but it's nice that you can do that from there. And I've done it before just to move it. So migrate VDI. I guess it's the migrate all VDIs must not have been there before. Um, but it makes it easy so you don't have to go and migrate and find the disk. You can migrate it from right there. Migration network. You can now actually set a migration network when you migrate a VM even within a pool. And this is handy if you've got maybe a storage network that's faster versus the main network you're interfacing on. So now you can choose which network interface on the machines that you want them to talk to each other on, maybe because you have a 10 gig backend interface, but the front interface is only hooked up at one gig. Um, but those are options that you can do. Now, better licenses, they've updated the way they handle the licenses uh, and the way they purchase it because of the way they have the proxies. Uh, so they've got that in here. So they have a couple different ways to handle it and they're gonna make this a little bit easier to handle the licensing. But the part I'm most excited about that I wanna do the demo on. So here we have this machine running and uh, We'll go ahead and destroy something on it. R, uh, R, F, whoops, star. Oh no, we're destroyed this machine. It's, I know it's uh, broken enough. Will this even, whoops. <laughs> yeah, there's no user bin. So yep, we broke it. Can we even do a shutdown now? Nope, I can't even shut it off. Well, I guess this one's broke. So let's go ahead and force shut down this machine. And please note that the snapshot was done about 30 minutes ago. We're going to, and this is a normal snapshot. This is a snapshot with memory. So we got the little memory icon right there. So I'm going to go ahead and move myself all the way so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, revert to this snapshot. We're not going to snapshot before. I just want to revert to it from the snapshot from 30 minutes ago with the memory. So and take a second to refresh here. Is pushing the memory back in and undoing my uh, RM RFing, and we're going to log back in. I wasn't logged in when I did the snapshot. The files are all still there, and uptime. So up thirty three minutes. That's impressive. So uh, for dem one more demonstration on this. So let's restart it real quick. So we have a new fresh uptime on this. All right, and it is booted back up. Yes, these boot fast. It's on a nice fast connection in our lab here. There's a couple files that I have in here. It's booted up, right? So we're going to head and purge this particular snapshot. We'll do a new snapshot with memory. All right, create the checkpoint on here. And we can see uptime right now. So it's been up for one minute and we'll just go ahead and RM star. I just want to get rid of the files that are in this directory. So there's no more files in the directory here. But let's go ahead and I'll restore it to its state right here. So we'll actually shut it off. Shuts down, go back over to snapshot and do the same thing again. We're just going to go ahead and run a restore on it. So go ahead and revert. Don't snapshot before. And it's going to go from a shutdown state to revert it, it's pushing all that in there. If we look at the tasks, it's pushing the resume volume, async, resume VM. There we go. 
and there's exactly where it left off in the status and everything else. And because it realizes it's up, it's updated the uptime, it's been updated for uptime for a minute, just like it was. So it's a perfect snapshot. Even if you're running applications, everything that's running in the background, it's grabbing all of those and putting them in. And I, this is a really impressive feature that I think they added. So uh, kudos to the team that put this all together so they could, uh, you know, all this open source, 100% free. And uh, this is a lot of good hard work that uh, goes into making this work. As much, as much fun as migrating live machines and, you know, you, the ability was there, adding this little feature so we can do the backups, this works. Now, where's that at in the backups? Let's go here. If we go to edit one of these backups, you go here to advanced and uh, backup mode with memory. So when it takes the snapshot, you can actually have it doing this. And then when you restore something from backup, you're still able to push it in there. So some really cool features on there. Um, once again, 100% open source, 100% free. You can get all of the files and download it. So I'll go ahead and start playing with it. And of course, I've mentioned this before. If you need any support from their team, you just go to their com. They do f sell full support packages for both XCP and G and for there's an orchestra if you wanted to buy fully supported ones in a commercial environment. Um, they do offer that. The .com is for the commercial. The .org is all the open source, you know, where you just get community support. And uh, But I highly recommend trying this out. It's wonderful for building out your home lab, but it's also great for working in full production. We use it in production here. Uh, we have a lot of clients that use it in production. We've seen some very large scale systems are using this. Uh, that's a question seems to come up. Well, isn't this just some toy? It's a very solid commercial product and uh, it's impressive. Every update, even though it's only a point release, is really impressive. All the extra features that they keep packing in here and adding on to it. All right, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general. Even suggestions for new videos, they're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.